Developing storm to our west may bring a mess into the Bluegrass State for Super Bowl Sunday. I'll tell you what to expect straight ahead. A Lexington gas station is hit by two smash and grabs, and the owner thinks the same thief is responsible for both. Police say a driver high on drugs hit a gas pump starting a fire in Pulaski County. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 430. Good afternoon on this Friday. Sam Dick and Amber Philpott reporting. We're at the end of a wintry week here in the bluegrass, and it looks like we have kind of a mix of weather this weekend. Yeah, Super Bowl Sunday looking like a wet day here in the bluegrass now. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Hi, Chris. Yeah, hi, guys. Uh, dealing with a beautiful uh, start to that weekend, though, but we're going to ugly it up very quickly as we go into the latter part of the weekend as a developing storm system takes aim at the bluegrass state. Let's fast forward to Saturday evening at 7 o'clock. When we may see a little band of some light snows starting to break out across western Kentucky, southern Indiana. Good chance that impacts parts of central and northern Kentucky by early Sunday morning. But if you want a big snow in Kentucky, you want a storm that tracks across Tennessee. You don't want it right on top of the bluegrass state, but that looks to be the case as of now. That low gets into parts of central and eastern Kentucky. Come Sunday, that'll push the heavier bands of snow from Indy over toward the northern parts of the Cincy area into Columbus and Pittsburgh. That means we switch it over to rain and a cold rain for much of Super Bowl Sunday. Then by Sunday night, that storm system wraps up to our east. We make the transition back to a period of some snow. May try to put a little on the ground into first thing Monday morning. That's at least the the current track. We're still 48 hours away from that. That bad boy's been going north and south on those tracks over the past couple of days. Life first alert defender, nothing going on across central and eastern Kentucky. How about your Friday evening forecast? It's a cold one, mainly clear skies, frosty cold conditions already showing up by 11 o'clock, guys. Temperatures in the low 20s. Coming up here in just a bit, we'll have a little greater breakdown on what to expect for that Super Bowl storm system. All right, Chris, thank you. The search continues for the man who broke into a Lexington gas station overnight. It happened about 2 o'clock at the Marathon gas station on West Main and Jefferson Streets. The owner says this is not the first time the store has been targeted. WKYT's Whitney Wetzel has the latest on the investigation. It's our top story at 4 30. A Lexington gas station is the victim of two smash and grabs, and the owner thinks the same thief is responsible. The burglar alarm at the marathon on the corner of Main and Jefferson Streets went off a little after 2 o'clock this morning. When officers got there, they saw the front door window had been smashed out. Surveillance video shows a man used a rock to break that glass. He then went inside and took black and milds. Police described the man in this video as a black man about 5 foot 6 with a thin beard. He was wearing a shiny jacket and dark jeans. The store owner believes this is the same man that broke into to his store last Thursday. That time, the thief took cash. In Lexington, Whitney Wetzel, WKYT. So, if you recognize the man in that surveillance video, please call Lexington Police. We're also tracking a crime alert after an overnight home invasion on the UK campus. People living in a home on State Street told police they woke up to hear someone in the home. They said that their TV was stolen. Police do not have any information about the thief. A man is in jail accused of dragging an officer down the road in a car. Jamal Robinson was arrested yesterday in Lexington. The sheriff's office says after a chase in December, Robinson tried to hit a deputy with his car. When a deputy tried to grab the keys out of the ignition, police say Robinson dragged the deputy who was hanging out the window. The deputy was taken to the hospital with injuries to his ribs. A southern Kentucky gas station has been damaged after the Pulaski County Sheriff's Office says a woman high on drugs caused a crash. The Sheriff's Office says the woman was driving on Oak Hill Road when she lost control hitting a fire hydrant and a gas pump. WKYT's Victor Puente shows us all the damage. Pulaski County Sheriff's deputies tell me they believe this crash was caused by a driver who was high on drugs. They say it's a problem they're seeing more of and they're trying to do something about. The crash happened around 3 a.m. Thursday morning. A deputy tells me 27 year old Megan Ganshorn was driving north on Oak Hill Road when she lost control of her Honda and shot off the road, hitting a water hydrant, then a gas pump at the Oak Hill Food Mart. That collision started a fire. Police believe it was leaking gas, but the Somerset Fire Department was able to put it out. Workers at the Food Mart tell me the pumps have a cutoff to prevent gas from spilling in this type of scenario. Police arrested Ganshorn and charged her with DUI. Possession of drug paraphernalia. 
They can also be under the influence of drugs, and uh, as a result of that, we're making a concerted effort to get those people off the road uh, because they are certainly a hazard not only to themselves but to the general public. This isn't the first DUI charge Ganshorn has faced. She was arrested for the same offense in December of 2013. That case still appears to be working its way through the court system. In Pulaski County, Victor Puente, WKYT. And clerks at Oak Hill Market say it could be more than a month before that pump is replaced. Kentucky is locked in a fierce battle with Florida, and you mm -hmm. can take a shot and help secure the win. Yeah, this is the last day for the annual Big Blue Slam Blood Drive competition, and right now the Cats and the Gators are tied. Donors will get a limited edition t shirt and a chance to win a pair of tickets to the second and third rounds of the 2015 NCAA men's basketball tournament in Louisville. You can donate through seven tonight at all Kentucky Blood Center locations. Kentucky and Florida have each won three competitions since the annual battle began in 2009. For rap music mogul Suge Knight has been arrested on suspicion of murder after a deadly hit and run last night in Compton, California that's killed Knight's friend and injured another man. Danielle Nottingham has the latest now from the sheriff's station in West Hollywood. Suge Knight surrendered to authorities in Los Angeles overnight. The death row records founder was arrested on suspicion of murder after investigators say Knight ran over two men in Compton and fled the scene. Can you say anything about the allegations against you? Detectives say Knight began arguing with two men on a film set in Compton before the fight moved to the parking lot of this nearby burger joint. I noticed that they were arguing pretty loud. Suge Knight turned around and walked towards his car. Witnesses say Knight then rammed his red pickup into the men and drove over them twice before speeding off. Knight's friend, actor Terry Carter, was killed. A second man injured. They appear to have gang ties, or at least associates with gang, uh, gangs uh, in this area. Homicide detectives question Knight here at this station in West Hollywood. Knight's attorney says his client was just trying to escape attackers. Knight has a long history with violence. He pleaded not guilty to a robbery charge in November and was shot six times at an L.A. nightclub in August. Knight is being held on $2 million bail for Thursday's fatal hit and run. Danielle Nottingham, CBS News, West Hollywood. Knight is credited with for launching artists like Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, and Tupac. In 1996, Knight was driving the car that Tupac was shot and killed in. With his former team about to play in the Super Bowl, former New England's Patriots star Aaron Hernandez is on trial for murder. Hernandez is charged with the shooting death of semi pro football player Odin Lloyd in 2013. In court yesterday, prosecutors told the jury that Hernandez's DNA was found on a marijuana cigarette found near Lloyd's body and was on a shell casing from a bullet found under the driver's seat of the rental car Lloyd was seen getting into. The jury is hearing more testimony today. The trial is expected to last between six to ten months. The goal or the fight mm -hmm. to get fit continues as we end the first month of 2015. Our Deanne Stevens is out and about at Body Structure, where group fitness is extremely popular right now. Hi, Deanne. Hey, good afternoon, guys. It's always more fun to do things when you're with a group of friends or at least a group of people who are there to motivate you and inspire you. Josh Morton here with Body Structure knows that all too well because this whole group fitness thing really can be inspiring and, and motivational. Absolutely, absolutely. We've teamed up with Polar to really incorporate target fitness heart rate training, yeah. okay? Really getting in, energizing music, really pushing for... And doing that with the group. Absolutely. Coming in with the group, whether it be small from 6 to 12, but really focusing on target heart rate training, staying in, in that fat burning orange zone, really focusing on the epic excess post oxygen consumption, which creates that metabolic burn throughout the rest of the day. So everybody in here, they're doing a different activity. What kind of activities do we have Absolutely. going on? We've got spin right here, and there's different variations of seated, standing, resistance changing. You can actually lift with this with dumbbells. On the row, we're covering different meters, whether it be 500, 1600 meters, which is a mile, really focusing on form and a good pull there, so changing the resistance back and forth here on the side. And then we also have a lift in each corner that is safe on our cable pulley system with kinesis. It used to be our kinesis room, and now we've turned it into our lifts in the corner. We can also incorporate dumbbells and other body weight exercises. And then what are we seeing behind us? Because that heart rate, you can, you can kind of yeah. watch it as you go. Each individual is put into our polar flow, and they have a H7 strap, which is our heart rate monitor strap, and it's based off of their age, their, their, you know, their gender, and it's tar specific for their, uh, their individual fitness being. So they, they actually can be monitored during the 
their class individually. And at the top, we have the flame go as a group. So as a group, you can see how many calories you're burning at the same time versus individually. Juliana, you better get to work. Where's Juliana? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Okay, group fitness here at Body Structure. Where, I, where are you guys looking? On 2600 Griven Drive behind the Chop House. I can coach it. I just can't do it. Group fitness really does make things a whole lot more fun. Come check out the folks here at Body Structure. I'm Deanne Stevens, out and about. Back to you guys. Yeah, and full disclosure, that's where I work out. Yeah. I do that once a week, sometimes twice a week, among other classes. Love it. So. I like that they can monitor yeah. every person, and so, but so you can see what everybody else is doing. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a challenge for those <laughs> of us who are competitive. Yeah. Miranda Lambert proves that once again she is the reigning queen of country music. That's right. Lambert is the top contender at this year's Academy of Country Music Awards with eight nominations, including Entertainer of the Year. She'll compete against Garth Brooks, Luke Bryan, Jason Aldean, and Florida Georgia Line. Lambert is also nominated for Album of the Year and Female Vocalist of the Year. The ACMs will be held April 19th at AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. Lambert's husband, Blake Shelton, and Luke Bryan will be back as hosts, and the show will air live right here on WKYT. Katy Perry talks about her upcoming Super Bowl show and a big bang on Broadway. Suzanne Marquez has those stories and more in your eye on entertainment. Jim Parsons is playing God on Broadway. The Big Bang star is in the title role of the upcoming production, An Act of God. The 90 minute comedy opens in May. Katy Perry is tuning up for one of the biggest audiences of her career. The pop star will take the stage during Super Bowl halftime, performing for an estimated 100 million viewers. She says the scandal over deflated footballs won't steal her thunder. I think I can assure everyone in here that. Nothing in my performance will be deflated. Edina Menzel will sing the national anthem. A new documentary goes behind the scenes with the Backstreet Boys. Show them what you're made of explores the ups and downs of stardom. The band showed up for the Los Angeles premiere. It was a great way to start this album off because we did this right when we were starting the recording for the album. The Backstreet Boys are the best-selling boy band in history. Their new movie comes out in theaters and on demand today. Amy Poehler led the way through snowy Cambridge. The parade ended at Harvard Square where the comedian was recipient of the Hasty Pudding Woman of the Year Award. The award honors performers who have made a lasting contribution to their art. And that's your Eye on Entertainment. Suzanne Marquez, CBS News, Los Angeles. A rapper and producer Jay-Z is getting into the music streaming business. Jay-Z announcing he is buying a Swedish music streaming company for $56 million. The company runs the U.S. music subscription service Tidal, which also streams videos and magazines. Tidal has partnerships with several large record companies. Disney has unveiled its first Latina princess. Disney describes Alina of Avalar as a 16-year-old inspired by diverse Latin cultures and folklore. Alina will debut on Disney Junior's Sophia the First cartoon next year. She'll star in her own series that's set to debut in 2016. It seems our friend over here has made some adjustments to his Sunday forecast. I think I kind of like them, and I know you like them, right, Chris Bailey? I, I really like them, to be honest with you, because I was hoping for a full weekend to watch the Super Bowl. And based on the forecast now, I may just get that. That's a good thing in my book. Take a look outside, show you how that weekend is starting out, guys, with temperatures into the low and the mid 30s as of now. 34 Corbin, 36 Frankfurt, 34 Richmond, Lexington checking in at 35 degrees. All four locations with at least partly sunny skies, though more in the way of sun, showing up Richmond, Lexington, and into the Frankfurt area. Little uh, salt still on the roads from those snow showers that we had earlier in the day to kind of start things out. What we're looking at deeper into our weekend by tomorrow night, here will be, or here's the setup that we'll see a low pressure developing across parts of the Ozarks that may have a streak of some light snow along that, but that low wants to travel toward the bluegrass state instead of taking a track across Tennessee. Coming up in a little bit, we'll show you why that low coming just 50 or 100 miles farther to the north will have a big impact on the weather you get for Super Bowl Sunday into Sunday night. Busy afternoon on the roadways. Fridays always are. To keep a check on it all, here's Officer Don. Live look at a couple of things. One is a collision at Clays Mill and Stone. Now, one outbound lane, well, the only outbound lane at Clays Mill is blocked there, so they're running one lane for both in and outbound traffic on Clays Mill Road for now. And then to downtown, still in the cleanup phases of a crash, it's between 
Bolivar and Angliana on South Broadway leaving town. Uh, police should have that cleared in the next few. Now back to the studio. To become a WKYT live driver and download the Waze app, go to WKYT.com. Under the news tab, click on traffic for more information. Seals enjoy the Arctic weather, Super Bowl themed Starbucks drinks, and a deflate gate soda. It's the video that will have you talking. Take a look at this. This week's blizzard may not have been fun for some people in New England, but for a fur seal, it was heaven. Mm -hmm. Cheedax is an 18 month old fur seal. He was videotaped playing in the snow Tuesday at the New, New England Aquarium. A few of his harbor seal friends got in on the fun as well. Cheedax fur is one of the thickest in the world, so he was definitely comfortable <laughs> in all of that snow. Having fun there. Yeah, he thought he was back home. Starbucks is getting into the Super Bowl spirit with a Seattle Seahawks themed drink. The Seahawks Frappuccino features vanilla cream blended with blueberries and topped with green tea infused whipped cream. The blue and green beverage resembles the Seahawks colors. The drink is available through Sunday at select Washington State and Oregon Starbucks. And in the wake of the recent controversy over Deflate Gate, there's a new brew at a Connecticut soda company. Avery's Soda has created a new soda called Deflated Ball Brew. They say the flavor is a citrus mix of grapefruit, orange, and lime, has a little less carbonation than normal. The company says calls from as far away as North Carolina were coming in for the soda. There are only about 2,400 bottles in circulation, so get them now. A lot of people having a lot of fun with that yes. this year. All right.